Meanwhile, the financial penalties that have been imposed on Russia have started to disrupt the country's economy. The Moscow Stock Exchange has been shut for over two days now, and investors are divesting themselves from Russian interests. The Russian government's borrowing costs have also doubled to almost about 17%, and the Standard & Poor's Credit Rating Agency has downgraded the Russian economy to junk status. Our next report gets you the details. Today, I'm authorizing additional strong sanctions and new limitations on what can be exported to Russia. And Russia leadership will face unprecedented isolation. We are now progressing at the second phase of those financial sanctions. Les sanctions portées à la Russie seront à la hauteur de l'agression dont elle sera coupable. We will weaken Russia's economic base and its capacity to modernize. A Nippon wa Putin daitoryo fukumu. With new financial measures, we're taking new powers to target Russian finance. As attacks continue in Ukraine and Russian troop and Russian forces press their advance, the West has unveiled a series of sanctions. To deprive Putin of the funds he needs for this war, they've targeted Russian banks, oligarchs, businesses, oil refineries and military exports. These financial penalties have already disrupted the Moscow Stock Exchange and sent the Russian currency cratering more than 30%. A sharper economic fallout is expected in the days ahead. JP Morgan says Russia could even enter a recession. To make this economic blowback worse, the corporate world is also severing ties with Russia. A host of multinational companies have taken some big steps. If we speak of oil companies, energy giant Shell has decided to exit all Russian operations, including its partnership with Russia's state-owned Gazprom. Norwegian energy firm Equinor is also divesting its joint ventures in Russia. It will be abandoning a deal it struck almost 30 years ago. If we speak of tech giants, Dell has suspended all product sales in Russia. Intel is suspending chip shipments to Russia. Facebook parent company Meta has barred Russian ads on its website. Twitter too has restricted access to Russian handles in Europe and Google has banned Russian state media from collecting ad money from its websites, apps and YouTube videos. Then we have financial institutions. British bank HSBC is winding down relations with several Russian banks. The New York Stock Exchange has temporarily suspended trading for Russian companies. Nasdaq too has barred Russian-owned firms from trading on its exchanges. The list doesn't end there. FIFA and UEFA have barred Russia from all international competitions. The IOC has banned both Russian and Belarusian athletes from competing. Formula One has cancelled this year's Russian Grand Prix. Transport giants FedEx and UPS have suspended their shipments to Russia. America's Delta Airlines has halted its alliance with Russia's Aeroflot. Disney has paused theatrical releases of its films in Russia. Netflix has suspended its streaming of all its services. And singing competition Eurovision will not allow any Russian acts this year. Even the president of Russia hasn't been spared. In 2013 he was conferred with an honorary black belt by World Taekwondo. The organization has now stripped him of this honor. It has also refused to recognize any Taekwondo events in Russia henceforth. Now here's the thing. Some of these measures may be purely symbolic. They may not inflict serious economic damages on Russia, but they send a message to Moscow that there can be no place for such naked aggression in today's world. Beyond is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.